In this video, we're gonna go over four different roof designs and where we're gonna put solar panels on each roof. Each roof is different and unique, has positives and negatives, and we're gonna walk through each of those from your standard traditional cottage style roof, which is gonna have you know four sides, north, south, east, and west, your gable roof, which is just east and west, your gable roof, which is north and south, and then also kind of your optimal design where if you're able to design build and just do a straight south facing roof. So we'll walk you through each of those designs, all four of them. So the first design we're gonna walk you through is your standard cottage style roof. With this roof, you are a little bit limited on space. You can fit about seven kilowatts of solar, which basically if each of these panels is 500 watts, we are able to fit on them 14 panels. Of those 14 panels, we have four on the south facing side and we also have five on the east side and five on the west side. So with this system, some of the advantages by having the panels spread out on multiple surfaces like this, you're gonna have the sun starting on the east side. As it rises, you're gonna get a little bit of early morning power production from your east facing panels. As the sun moves more in the middle of the day to the south side, you're gonna get some stronger energy output from the south side. And towards the end of the day, when people tend to start coming home, you're gonna get more energy production on the west side. So five more panels there. Uh, overall, this system is gonna produce per thousand watts, you're gonna get 1,085 kilowatt hours. Um, and overall in, the, in, you know, in an annual period, you're gonna get 7,597 kilowatt hours. Um, yeah, with the hips being here and the layout, it's gonna be a little bit more intricate. So actually just installing it, it's gonna be a little bit more labor intensive. You're gonna have three penetrations through the roof as well. So labor wise, it's a little trickier. Um, you are able to use one single 7.6 kilowatt inverter. So that would be one of the advantages. Um, and just kind of rolling through the uh, irradiance map, you lose 17.4% due to tilt, which you can't really change that. Most roofs are gonna range between four and 612 to make it simple. In all the examples, I used a 612 roof slope. Um, and ideally, if you're south facing, you're gonna be a little bit better on the tilt angles. Um, so you do lose a bit there. You lose a bit for soiling little dirt dust on the panels, 2%. You lose about 3% being in Canada and specifically in Saskatchewan in our location. You lose 3% due to snow coverage. Uh, and incident angle, you lose 4.1. Uh, your standard kind of DC losses and your AC losses on the inverter. Um, and then we always factor in an additional 8% just to give conservative projections on what your overall energy simulation is. So this is gonna be a very conservative model. The pros, yeah, you get that east, west, and south facing sun. You are maximizing most of the roof, but overall it's probably the most limited for design yeah. for what you can fit on there and optimizing. Um, obviously the north side, can't really put anything on it. Some people will ask, well, why don't we just tilt the panels to face you know, south on it? Once you go to tilted racking, it's gonna increase your cost and engineering as well. Um, most flush roof systems are just whatever the slope is, you put your racking on at the same angle, where if you try to do a tilted panel on the north side, um, it does create an issue with both wind and then the second you put that tilted panel on this north side and it's tipped up say 15 degrees, it's now gonna cast a shadow down to this lower surface. So now I have to put a space in between the two panels. So that's why we'd never put panels typically on the north side, unless you happen to have an all north facing roof surface that's very large. And then you can go to a, just an all tilted racking. But if you have good south, east and west facing exposures, we'll always fill those first. And typically you'll wanna fill the south side first because it's gonna be your highest energy production surface on the roof. For instance, this one, if you look over here in the irradiance corner and total access, it's gonna give you an overall uh, efficiency rating of each surface as I put the mouse on it. So if you're on the south side, at the very peak, you're about a 97% power production. If you're on the east side, 76%. If you're on the west side, 77%. So they're both pretty equal east or west. You hop on that north side, 54%. So you basically need twice as many panels on the north to get almost equal to what the south is. So not that it can't be done, it's just not as efficient. So next we'll jump into the north-south kind of traditional gable style roof, two sides. One side's gonna face north and the other side is gonna face south. On the 
south side, you're able to fit 14 panels, just like you were on that cottage style, east, south, and west. Um, you're only utilizing 50% of your total roofing space, but the 50% you are utilizing is very energy efficient. Uh, seven kilowatts on that side with an annual energy production of 8,963 kilowatt hours. Uh, the yield is really good. You're at 1,280 kilowatt hours per thousand watts of solar. So for every thousand watts that you have installed over the course of a year, you're going to put out 1,280 kilowatt hours or watt hours. Um, it's a really good efficient sp space. You're going to see your maximum energy production by being on that south side. Uh, the one negative, you're only using 50% of your roof, but the 50% you do have very high on the output. Um, as you can see on the uh, irradiance map and, and uh, system losses projection over here, you're only losing about 3% due to tilt. Once again, this is a 612 roof. Um, as you move down, there's no shading, 2% for soiling, 3% for snow, 3.1% 3, 3 for incident angle. Again, you've got a few standard system losses from changing your DC runs, which basically is your, your cabling and connections running from your panels to your inverters. And then when you invert the power from DC to AC, you're going to lose in another 1% on the AC side. And then we do again factor in approximately 8% in losses for uh, snow cover. Well, sorry, that one's not snow coverage. Snow, snow coverage is 3%. Uh, it, the 8% down here is just an additional safety factor to give safe projections. Uh, the north side of this surface is going to be producing same as the last one, 1660 for the irradiance. North side, 920. Uh, factoring in slope, which way panels are facing, you're about a 54% efficiency rating on the north side and 97% on the south side. If you had more roof surface, a north versus south system versus east-west, you are limited on seven kilowatts. It's a very efficient seven kilowatts. So if you're only needing, you know, seven to 10 kilowatts of, of energy, really good system, really good utilization of space. But if you need a lot more energy in that like 15 kilowatt range, uh, you're gonna struggle to get that with your total power output being you know, a little over 9,000 kilowatt hours where if you're east-west or have that full south-facing surface, you just have more surface area. Uh, we'll jump into the next design here, which will be the east-west facing design. So with this east-west facing system, we now have panels maximized on the east and the west. We'll run a simple irradi irradiation map we can basically fit double the amount of solar panels. So on the first two, we'll be able to fit seven kilowatts on both of those systems. The traditional cottage style, seven kilowatts. The north-south, seven kilowatts only on the south side. Now we're able to fit seven kilowatts on the east side and seven kilowatts on the west side. So you have a total of 14 kilowatts on the DC. And based on the energy production modeling, you're gonna produce 14,103 kilowatt hours over the course of a year, which is about 5,000 more kilowatts than you would with just a south facing seven kilowatt system on the south side. So significantly more power production by having that east west over the course of the year. If you need the extra energy, you're gonna get that. Uh, the one drawback of this system, it's not gonna be quite as efficient. Uh, the other system was about 1280 for kilowatt hours, this is 1,007 kilowatt hours per 1,000 kilowatts. Um, so your, your obvious losses, it's gonna be on your tilt. Uh, you're facing east-west, south is gonna be your better production for your surface. So you lose a little bit there, 23.2%. Uh, soiling and snow, same conditions, incident angle, all that's the same. DC mismatch is gonna be the same. Snow, all those things are, are gonna be the same. Um, one of the advantages of an east-west facing system versus a direct south system, uh, you are going to get that early morning east facing sun. So if you're an early riser and, you know, from spring, summer, you're going to be able to utilize more of your solar energy early in the morning, just because that sun comes up kind of on this, you know, eastern corner, and it's going to swing all the way around and eventually hit you on the west side. So you're also going to be able to use those west facing panels to, uh, to consume more energy at night. So you will see a better consumption profile uh, of your energy. So as you produce it, you use it more often than a south facing system. And most systems that are installed are gonna be a net metered system. 
meaning so as you produce the energy you use it first so all the loads that are in your electrical panel you're going to feed those and if you have fed all of them that extra energy has to go somewhere and it's going to go to the grid and you bank credits so with a south facing system you're going to feed the loads of your panels and it's going to be pretty early and then you're going to have a much larger peak that's going to go to the grid where if you're east west facing half your panels are on the east and half are on the west you're not going to be producing that total 14 kilowatt load all at once you're going to be basically in the middle sometimes a little above it depending on you know where you're at in the day but you're going to get that early morning east sun so you're going to consume that energy when it's at a bit of a lower profile and as you swing over to the west side you're going to be consuming that energy at night too when you're home you know doing your dishes and running your dishwasher and cooking and running the electric stove and dryer and all that stuff too so one of the common misconceptions that we always kind of hear um, a lot of people assume if you don't have a south facing roof you can't install solar on it or it won't work so that's actually not the case uh, an east west facing roof actually does still work and on an efficiency scale it's generally between 15 and 20 percent less efficient so what it's going to mean is you just have to add a few more panels on your east west surface to be able to match what a south facing power production would be so with that east west facing roof that we have here uh, you do gain actually the benefits of consuming the energy as you produce it a little bit more than you would just a south facing roof um, it's not quite as energy efficient but if you do have that east west facing facing roof you actually have more space typically to fit panels because a lot of people either have you know not always but an east west facing gable roof or a north south and so the advantage of having the east west in this particular case you can fit 14 kilowatts of solar in total so 14 kilowatts up here versus a north south gable it's only going to be seven kilowatts so you can only fit half that system size yes it's not as efficient but this east west system is still able to produce almost 5,000 kilowatt hours more than just that north south facing system so one of the other advantages you get with an east west facing roof is you don't necessarily have to size the inverter to match the DC ratio so the DC on your solar panels here again we have 14 kilowatts DC we went with an 11.4 kilowatt AC inverter and so the maximum amount of energy that inverter will be able to allow through it is 11.4 2.6 kilowatts you know less than what I have on the roof but the reason being that you can oversize the DC is because you have panels that are facing east and half the panels are facing west so you're never going to be producing all of that energy at once because it's all based on the sun's placement if the sun is out east you're going to get way more power production out of your east facing panels and less production out of your west so with this particular system we have one section that's called inverter clipping and even with an 11.4 kilowatt inverter you're going to get zero clipping on this throughout the year so um, you don't necessarily have to go as big with your inverter size and that can save you a little bit of cost on uh, on your system overall so I'll show you the last system and this generally isn't going to be an option for a lot of people but if you haven't built your garage or built your space where you're going to be installing solar here's what I would do for an optimal roof line and a lot of people don't even think that it's an option but yeah it most certainly is so what we have here is an all south facing surface and it's just basically one surface single slope it carries all the way to the south side um, on the entire surface so you're going to get your uh, your maximum energy production with this system you can fit 14 kilowatts of solar on this specific roof and uh, yeah it's going to put out your most energy so 14 kilowatts here you're going to be putting out an annual energy output of 17,912 kilowatt hours you compare that to that east west system which was right around that you know 14 15,000 kilowatt hours you're getting an extra you know three almost four thousand kilowatt hours by having everything face south yeah on this south facing system so yeah we're able to fit 14 panels uh, we ended up going to two inverters here too two 7.6 kilowatt inverters on all the previous systems we either had one 7.6 kilowatt inverter or the last east west facing one that was 14 kilowatts we had an 11.4 kilowatt ac inverter uh, so the biggest difference there is these two 7.6s adds up to 15.2 compared to the 11.4 with all your panels facing south you're more likely to have what in the industry we call clipping um, 
if you were to size your DC, which is all your panels, versus your AC to be a little lower. Um, so that's why we went with two 7.6 kilowatt inverters, just so that DC-AC ratio is a little tighter. Um, your panels being DC, 500 watts each. Uh, on this system, we have 14 kilowatts DC. We have two 7.6 kilowatt AC inverters, so you got 15.2. Um, the other option was an 11.4 AC inverter, but if we matched an 11.4 kilowatt AC inverter with 14 kilowatts DC, and the DC is all facing south, that means it's always going to produce at its maximum energy um, as the sun goes higher in the sky, and you're eventually going to be producing pretty close to 14 kilowatts. So say it's 13, and you only put out 11.4, you're going to be clipping, you know, two and a half kilowatts of energy. So the reason we went to a higher size inverter is just so we don't clip off that extra energy because the inverter is limited on the amount of energy it allows to flow through it and if it clips off then you kind of lose that energy. Um, yeah so more advantage of this you're, you're maximizing the whole surface area of your roof uh, you're getting the most production you can get through the course of a day. Um, overall even stuff like snow will sit a little bit less on a south facing surface because it's going to get the most exposure to the sun throughout the winter time too. Yeah overall south optimal design if you can do it from the beginning. Uh, roof slope we always like 612. Main reason being 812 is probably your best for production. 612 is actually your last kind of like walkable roof surface so when you're framing your costs on a 612 are generally about the same as if they were a 4 or a 5 because you get it's still walkable. Once you get up to 7 or 812 it's no longer an easy walkable surface so you're going to charge more on the labor for your framing, for your sheeting, for your roofing and for your solar installation. So we really like 612 because it's easy to walk on and if there is any issues down the road then you can maintain it too. You can get up on the roof and, and work on it. Or 812 you might need to scaffold or get special equipment. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the like, subscribe button. Any questions, put them in the comments. We're happy to answer. We love playing devil's advocate and seeing what people think and know. And if you have any questions, yeah, hit them in the comments and, and we'll get back to you.